In this video, we'll see how we can find the period of a sinusoidal function. We've discussed periods before a little, but to remind ourselves and make sure we are on the same page, the period is the time it takes a function to start repeating itself. Now, this is a pretty fuzzy definition, but I think when we see a graph, it should be clarified. Here's a sinusoidal function with a period of two. We'll see how I know that it has a period of two in a moment. But for now, let's cut this Cartesian plane up. Here is x equals zero. Let me see if I can thicken this a little so it's easier to see. Here's x equals two. Here's x equals four. And you'll notice, that, so here's an interval of length two between zero and two, and here's an interval of length two between two and four. And you see that the graph in this first interval of length two and the graph in this second interval of length two are identical. In both cases, the graph starts at two, it drops down to negative one, it goes up to positive five, and then it drops back down to its starting point of two, and then it does the exact same thing again down to negative one, up to five, back down to its starting place. And this pattern is just going to repeat over and over and in particular, every interval of length two is going to look the same as every other interval of length two. And although I started at zero, zero isn't special. Let's look at intervals of length two that start somewhere else. Again, we see that the picture inside this first interval, the picture inside this second interval, and the picture inside this third interval are all the same. So what's the period of a sinusoidal function? Well, the period is controlled by the constant in front of the x, the period is 2 pi divided by b. So if we go back to Desmos, we looked at these graphs that had this graph. It has a period of two. You see a pi in front of the x. Well, here b is pi. So how did I know the period will be two? No, because 2 pi divided by 2, the pi's cancel, and we get 2 from this formula. Ah, let me actually modify this very slightly. In the vast majority of situations, this b 
is going to be positive. I think in every example, I think I've seen, but B is allowed to be negative. And to reflect that, let me put an absolute value around the B. And remember that all this absolute value is doing is it makes any negative value positive. So if we did happen to have a negative number in front of the X, find the period, you take 2 pi, you divide by the absolute value, the absolute value of negative four is positive four, and we get pi divided by two. Just one more quick example where the number in front of X is a fraction well, the number in front of x being a fraction doesn't change anything. Now we have 2 pi divided by a fraction, but hopefully we remember how to simplify this. Multiply by the reciprocal. and get the period, again, using this formula. And I've mentioned this, but in these sinusoidal functions, the A, B, C, and D do not interact. So changing A, changing C, changing D, none of that affects the period. If we go back, to this, and instead of a plus two, we have a plus six. Now this is still a period to a function. If we turn this three into a one, still a period to a function. It's only the B, that matters when you're asking about the period. And the period is 2 pi divided by the absolute value of B.